Hello friends. Today's video talk about some strange things that have been going on in Olympic National Park in Washington State. Some claim maybe even ritual killings. Very recently, in mid-September 2021, rumors have resurfaced that there have been signs of cult rituals found in Olympic National Park in Washington State. This is extremely disturbing, especially to those in the paranormal community and those of us who follow missing persons cases in our national parks and forests and in woodlands all around the world. Before we get into the recent news of the resurfacing of these rumors about these occult rituals, let's talk a little bit about the history of the park. It's definitely one of America's most beloved and one of the most popular for tourists in the whole country. However, human hikers and campers may not be the only ones traversing these trails and ascending these mountains. There's well-known rumors that most, if not all, our national parks are haunted to some degree, but this one in particular has a rich history with ghosts and spirits of all kinds, both high and lower vibrational beings, positive and negative, essentially. Olympic National Park is a breathtaking park situated on Washington's Olympic Peninsula. While it's mostly known for its diverse climates and breathtaking scenery, many visitors have experienced something rather otherworldly here. One of the main areas where you'll find a haunting in this huge park is the Spruce Railroad Trail that's said to be the location of ghostly sightings. In 1937, Hallie Latham Illingworth was killed by her husband and her body was found decomposed in the lake. Visitors have reported sightings of this Lady of the Lake wandering the eight-mile trail searching for help. Whenever a murder happens, there's bound to be some kind of haunting in the area where it took place. Just think of the energy there. To think about the wilderness and deep dark woods in this particular park area, we shouldn't be able to help but wonder, is this the spirit of Hallie Latham on a desperate and everlasting quest to free her soul from the agony of having been murdered by a man who was supposed to love her? A man whom she loved very much? There have been many workers around the trails who have reported hearing strange noises a child's giggle, a woman's scream, an evil voice demanding the workers get out of any specific area. Is this one of the reasons these so-called cult rituals and activities have been carried out here at one of America's most haunted family and tourist destinations? It's definitely a possibility. Perhaps whatever's already here draws more evil to it. Here's everything we've been able to find out about the rituals and what could have possibly gone on here. We may even find a clue as to who or what else is lurking about in the woods, stalking innocent hikers and families camping. A retired FBI agent named Ted Gunderson announced on national television that he believes that a satanic cult's burial ground would be unearthed in the park in Mason County, Washington. A law enforcement official for the United States Forest Service named Jay Webster wasn't surprised at all at this announcement, and in fact, he may have even seen it coming. He reported seeing evidence that led him to believe a satanic cult had been using the woods southwest of Shelton as their worship grounds. Ted Gunderson explained on national television that he was working with a civilian task force who had gotten information from what he would only describe as credible sources that there are actual burial grounds and dead bodies in the dirt due to the sacrifices and worshiping that has taken place here. He claimed there are so many sacrificed bodies of both animals and humans that it wouldn't be possible to dig all of them up. The information he received alleged there would be 20 bodies in just one of the sacrificial grounds. All of these seem to be located right inside the park, in the recreation areas where we hike and camp and picnic with our children, in these wooded areas where we set up our tents and sleep, along the edges of the trails where we go for day hikes and take our selfies to post on social media even right at the creepy stairway that allows entrance to the park from the Mason County side. It gives me the shivers, said one U.S. Forest Service employee of the predictions. Lieutenant Howard Armfield with the Mason County Sheriff's Department would neither confirm nor deny the rumors and speculation about the burial sites or satanic practices becoming a common thing in the parks and the woods nearby. Jay Webster, who patrols the areas in question and more for the Hoodsport Ranger District of Olympic National Forest, stated that, despite their now feigning ignorance, the Mason County Sheriff's Department is well aware of his two very creepy encounters with some sort of backwoods devil worship. He recalled that in June of 1987, 
A sheriff's detective called him and told him that deputies had found signs indicative of a cult ritual having been carried out near the Forest Service boundary on a sandbar of the South Fork of the Skokomish River, which is about 15 miles northwest of Shelton. Mr. Webster went on to state, In my mind I knew what the perfect site would be for that sort of thing, and I drove right to it. We got there and found pentagrams that are popular with these cults, upside down crosses, goat's heads drawn in the sand with a stick, candles, lots of melted wax, aluminum foil to backlight the candles, and we found holes dug into the sand. I was half afraid to dig into them for fear of what I might find in there. I did though, and there were only several layers of grass and sand, grass and sand, grass and sand. He also said that the year before all this, when Forest Service rules were prohibiting campfires because of the fire danger in the woods, he found a group of people who had built a fire on that same sandbar. However, he didn't think to check identification or even issue any citations. He simply asked them to put out the fire, and they did. He stated of the incident, It was one of those situations that I knew better than to get in too deep with them. Call it instinct or whatever. After all, at this time he had been working for the Forest Service for 22 years and felt he had great instincts for the job, something you need when you're out there all alone for hours and hours at night in the woods. Even the most well-traveled places can seem isolated and dangerous in the middle of the night. Jay Webster was almost positive that these people he had come across were one and the same as the cult that had left behind all this paraphernalia. He goes on to explain that later on that same night, he noticed the group had relit the fire as he saw it from far away while on a ridge above the sandbar. Before going back and approaching a group that had grown from just a few to now about 30 adults and which had relit what was now a blazing fire, he had the police on standby and asked them to come up there as backup immediately if they saw or heard anything go wrong. He says, the people that were there were definitely on drugs. There's no question in my mind. I didn't see the symbolism I'd seen before, but the women disappeared into the shadows and left the men to deal with me, he remembered. When I left, they put the fire out. I went back to the hilltop to look down, and they were all chanting. I couldn't understand what it was they were saying, but it was definitely a chant. That place is spooky to me now. He said he never found any indication of blood, bones, or human sacrifice, though. Residents, however, say that they were completely left in the dark about what was really going on in the woods up there, and that they were shocked and appalled at the news. The managing editor of the local newspaper, however, his name is Charlie Gay, stated that he had been hearing rumors and speculation about Forest Service agents stumbling upon what he only described as satanic remnants, but that has never actually been confirmed. Until now... That is, with the coming forth of Jay Webster's accounts after the FBI went on television with the news. Charlie Gate did speculate, however, that the FBI's prediction of what was going on in the woods of Mason County, specifically in Olympia National Park, had something to do with a case that was currently being tried in neighboring Thurston County, where three people, two of whom are former members of the Thurston County Sheriff's Department, were accused of multiple counts of sexual assault. These crimes have been confirmed to have occurred during a satanic ritual of some kind. There have been many cases of missing people, namely hikers, who have vanished seemingly without a trace in Olympic National Park since the so-called satanic panic era of the 80s and early 90s, when the above information was still unfolding. Sometimes there are clues, but most of the time there are none. We look forward to covering these more recent and bizarre cases individually as they relate to these strange rituals. What is going on there in Washington? More specifically, what is going on in Olympic National Park? Could there really be occult rituals being carried out under the cover of night right there in the woods where so many have gone missing since the initial uncovering of what was before that a tightly kept secret by law enforcement? Could animals and even human beings really be being sacrificed to Satan and his minions? Most importantly, could this be just another of the many things which are leading to all these strange and seemingly unexplainable cases of missing people taking place all around the world that has, up until recently apparently, been kept tightly guarded? In the last few years, so many missing person cases have come to sight, it seems like the problem is increasing. 
We're going to stay current on this and hope to bring you some more recent information soon. Until then, maybe stay away from the woods and forests of not just Olympic National Park, but any national park or forest. Or at least, run away very quickly in the opposite direction should you happen to hear even a whisper of chanting in the darkness while you're laying in your tent. What do you think of these bizarre occurrences? I really look forward to reading your opinion on these. Please keep it friendly and respectful. In the meantime, be good to yourselves and each other. I'll see you just a little farther on down the trail. I'm Steve Stockton, and I'll talk to you next time.